Hey, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to discuss the five most common mistakes people make when rebuilding their garden tractor engines. Stay tuned. But before we do, don't forget to check out the iSave Tractors Winter Beanie, now available at iSaveTractors.com for only $9.99. Keep your head warm and show your love for tractors with the I Save Tractors Winter Beanie. So, my job here at I Save Tractors is to talk and coach to customers through their engine and tractor rebuilding projects. Now, I've literally talked to thousands of people and helped them through their small engine rebuilds. And through this experience, I've identified five of the most common mistakes that people make when rebuilding their garden tractor engine. Mistake number one is not measuring your engine cylinder bore or the crankshaft. I deal with this situation all the time when I talk to customers. Customers will call me and want to order standard parts and when I talk about measuring, they say they did not measure it, they just looked at the cylinder bore, they see that there wasn't a scratch on it, it was all nice and shiny, same thing with the crankshaft, and they are convinced that standard parts will do. Well, that is not necessarily correct. Uh, your engine cylinder bore, for example, on a Kohler K-Series engine can be out of spec with as little as four thousandths of an inch of taper. And your crankshaft journal can be out of spec by as much as half a thousandths of an inch. Now, your eye cannot detect those small measurement differences. And just because you don't see any damage, any nicks or scratches in your cylinder, or your crankshaft is smooth, it does not necessarily mean that they are perfectly within spec. For example, look at this crankshaft here. It's all shiny, it looks great, doesn't it? It's actually one and a half thousandths out of round, and therefore this is out of spec for a standard connecting rod. It needs to be turned down to an undersize with an undersized matching rod. So the moral of that lesson is, don't trust your eye, measure because numbers don't lie. Now, mistake number two is measuring your engine without a micrometer. Now, I get a lot of people who love to measure with these, digital calipers. These are great for taking quick, rough measurements or measuring square parts, but they are not good for measuring engine parts. Uh, with tolerances as small as half a thousandths of an inch to determine if a part is out of spec or not, you always wanna use a micrometer. Micrometers are more accurate and they are easier to use to measure things like crankshafts uh, because the measurement won't move with your wrist like a caliper will. You turn this thimble, get your measurement. This is the best way to do it. Uh, if you don't have a set of micrometers, you can have a local engine machine shop measure it for you. Or if you have, if you're like most of us, you have more than one of these tractors, uh, you should definitely invest in a set of micrometers. They will come in handy. Mistake number three, and that is not repairing your valve seats properly. I have a lot of customers attempt to restore and repair valve seats with just lapping compound. If your valve seats are damaged, nicked, scratched in any way, lapping compound will not remove a significant enough material to fix that. You need to use a valve seat cutter like this one. This is the only way to do it. Uh, you know, if you don't have a valve seat cutter, you can use a local engine machine shop, they'll do it for you. Or again, if you're like most of us, you have a lot of these tractors, definitely worthwhile to get a set of your own. Uh, valves are the hardest working part of your engine and it's best to keep them up in uh, tip-top shape. Mistake number four, and that is not checking the piston ring end gap. Now, it is normal when you buy a set of piston rings to uh, need to do some final fitting before you put it into your engine. Before you uh, fit everything and reassemble everything in your engine, make sure you push the piston rings down into the cylinder by themselves. Use a feeler gauge to measure the end gap and adjust the end gap with a file if necessary. If you don't do this as your engine heats up uh, and if the end gap is too tight when it heats up and the metal expands, you could risk seizing your engine. Uh, so definitely make sure you check your end gap. Mistake number five and that is not checking your cylinder head for flatness before you put it back on your engine. Uh, you can check for flatness by using a glass countertop or a granite surface plate. What you do is you take your cylinder head, you put it on that flat surface, you try to stick a three or four thousandths of an inch feeler gauge in between 
the bottom of the cylinder head and the top of your flat object. If it slides in anywhere between the bolt holes, it means you need to re-flatten your cylinder head. Uh, you can do this by literally just taking a piece of sandpaper, wetting it down with some water, uh, putting it on your glass countertop or your granite surface plate, and just run that cylinder head back and forth on the sandpaper a few hundred times. It's easier and it goes much quicker than it sounds. But you do that until you can't stick that feeler gauge under there anymore, and then it's flat. You'll be much happier, you're gonna get a much tighter uh, seal in your combustion chamber, your engine's gonna run a lot better. So there you have it. Those are the five most common mistakes people make when rebuilding their vintage small engine from their garden tractor. Notice how three out of the five mistakes involve either not measuring your engine parts or measuring them incorrectly, so make sure you measure them when you do your next engine rebuild. If you avoid these five common mistakes, your engine will run smoothly at full power and last another 30 years. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, entertaining, and most of all, educational. If you are looking to get in the hobby of restoring, rebuilding, and using vintage garden tractors, please check out isavetractors.com. Our company supplies, develops, and sells the best quality aftermarket parts for vintage small engines and garden tractors. We also are a huge resource for information, instruction, how-to, service manuals, all of that stuff. So head on over to isavetractors.com. My name is Norman. See you next time.